Hi, I'm Dr. Duke, and this is I'm Right. Today, I am right about a tale of two cities, Donald Trump edition. Well, as we know, Donald Trump has been doing his European tour. Started off in Poland, where he got a hero's welcome. You had Polish people climbing walls to cheer him on, talk about pro-life, the sanctity of life, the, the importance of Western civilization, just really life-affirming messages about freedom, about capitalism, uh, about universal attitudes towards long-standing societal problems. And then he went to Germany, where he was immediately protested by 12,000 Antifa thugs. So much so that as we speak now, they're still rioting, hurling bottles, uh, threatening police officers. Hundreds of police officers have been injured. Let's just sort of set the stage here for a moment. The Nazis, right? The German heritage, whether you go back to Otto von Bismarck, whether you go back to World War I, whether you go back to uh, the Nazi regime in World War II. Here's a country right, that has a really bad record with regards to freedom, with regards to individuality, with regards to liberty. They are protesting Donald Trump and the entire G20's message of economic freedom and liberty. So what's really happened in Germany? We've come, what, 70, 80 years since World War II, and they're still protesting individualism. They're still protesting capitalism. The very capitalism that rebuilt Germany because of the Marshall Plan, right? Americans, after destroying Germany, generally use their capitalistic system to rebuild it and give it back to the Germans. And what are they doing now? What they did 40, 50, 70, 80 years ago. They are using their power now to protest liberty, freedom, capitalism, all that stuff. Meanwhile, the Poles, uh, the noble Poles, right, who were swallowed up multiple times by the Germans, swallowed up multiple times by the Russians. Nazis on one side, commies on the other. The Poles, who've endured as much as any European nation in terms of, of, of the kinds of brutality and violence that totalitarian systems provide, now the Poles are the defenders of freedom. Despite the horrors of Nazism and communism, they still remain a big, big, powerful voice for freedom. So. 80 years later, what's changed, right? Those who felt the boot of Nazis and Soviets want freedom. But the Germans didn't learn that lesson, did they? The Germans didn't learn their lesson. Now they're protesting everything that the G20 stands for. Uh, they're protesting liberty all the while, and I have to punctuate my conversation here with you today with this, by inviting in millions and millions of Muslim refugees, many of whom, wait for it, are overtly anti-Semitic. Does that rem remind you a little bit of the 30s in Germany? Why are the Germans much more comfortable with many anti-Semitic Semitic refugees than they are with freedom and liberty? More things change, more they stay the same. And God bless Donald Trump for being the one to show so starkly the differences between the Polish and the Germans. If you enjoyed this video and all of our videos, please consider a tax-deductible donation so we can keep the whole thing free for you. I'm Dr. Duke, thanks for watching.